Okay, so now we move on to looking at the third type of um, configuration for a ZFS pool, or uh, sorry, not a pool, a VDEV, and that's the RAID layout. Um, and as I've said previously, the RAID system is known as RAID Z in ZFS. And this method uses parity, parity to add redundancy. So we have spare disks that have got parity information that can uh, be used to rebuild missing data. And it allows us to have a um, more efficient um, form of uh, redundancy. So for example, you can have two disks with um, a third disk used for the parity information um, so that's a rather than a ratio of 50% data with mirroring as a minimum, um, you've got a ratio of two thirds to one third um, of data to parity. And the parity doesn't actually exist on one disk, the data and the parity is uh, spread across all the disks. But um, when we say there's one disk of parity, it's one disk's worth, i.e., the space that one disk takes up is the space that's taken up by parity data, not that it's actually um, all written to that one disk. Um, in traditional RAIDs, there's RAID 5 and RAID 6 with this parity redundancy. Um, the RAID 5 has one redundant disk, RAID 6 has two, and ZFS has a third where there are three um, redundant disks. Um, and RAID, uh, sorry, ZFS has, as a call, they call, as I've said, they're all called RAID Z. RAID Z is also known as RAID Z1 in ZFS. RAID Z2 is the one with two disks of parity, and RAID Z3 is one with three disks of parity. Um, and therefore, with each layout, you, um, each VDEV created from these different types of RAID Z can withstand either one, two, or three disk failures um, before a full failure of the VDEV. So let's start off by looking at RAID Z1, aka RAID Z. Um, which is the equivalent equivalent of RAID 5 in traditional RAID systems. Although note that the um, uh, problem that RAID 5 has been known to suffer from, the um, I think it's called the, is it the RAID 5 hole, I think it is, where there is a certain situation where data can go missing with RAID 5. Um, certain circumstances allow that to happen just because the way it works. Um, this doesn't occur with um, ZFS, it's, it's non-existent. And that is because of the extensive checksumming that goes on with um, ZFS. So what I'm going to do is just delete my previous um, pool. And that's because we're still sitting in it here. And you notice I'm destroying a test with a, a file system still mounted. It is quite serious. And as I said before, if you wanted to get this back, you'd have to do the import minus D or just import test. And if I do this, import minus D test, and it would recover that one that I've just deleted because I know the name of it. If I wasn't sure, then I'd have to do import minus D on its own let the system scan the disks to find out what disks are available that could be used to rebuild the um, the pool. So if I now do say pool status, oh in fact it's been a bit too clever and pull back. Oh of course no I know why. It's because this is scanned disks and I've just been working on files these are files. I don't think you can use this method to recover destroyed 
pools that have been made up from files because there's no way of specifying the search. I don't think there is. Let me try it. What you do is normally specify minus D and the path you want it to search. Let's try it. Oh no, it has. Yes, has it worked? Yes, it has worked. Yes, there it is there. That's the one I really wanted to recover. So if I do Z pool to destroy the current test one, pool. tell you what I want to do. Let's just rerun this command. So what I've done here, this is Z pool import minus D. I want to find all the destroyed pools. The minus lowercase d means search this directory for these files or for these devices. So basically it's, it's telling it not to look in the forward slash dev as it would do normally, um, but look in, in this directory instead. And that's why it's found this um, test pool that we were using that used files in the previous video. So I'm going to attempt to import that now. Right, okay, that's because as it says, it's ambiguous. There's two pools that it have met the criteria. I need to use this ID. So I'm going to try and type that in. 92987862147602950888. And there it is importing. Uh, so pull status and there's our pullback with the two files and indeed the last scan information is there when it resilvered this disk uh, resilvered this disk for and we should be able to do Z pull history on that as well um, test and yeah, you can see all the work that we did on it there. It's all recorded and time stamped. So let me destroy this once more. Uh, test. So so what I'm going to do is to create a RAID Z1, aka a RAID Z. So you can refer to them either way with ZFS. It will recognize them both. And as before, what we do is Z, Z pool create instead of a mirror this time we're creating a raid z oops I can spell it and as i said you can either specify it as a raid z or be explicit and call it a raid z1 it's probably the better way to do it in case the meaning of raid z changes in the future and then you specify the devices you want so i'm going to use my files again just so i can demonstrate the redundancy in action and I'm not going to type them all in, although, as I said before, you can keep typing them all in like that. I'm going to use the, this bash expansion and just do one to four, just to add all of them in. So all four disks will form part of the redundant, uh, part of the raid, raid Z. Oh, I haven't created the name. <laughs> Right, so the name of the pool, then the type of VDEV I want to create, and then the devices in the VDEV. It's warned me that there are all different sizes. So again, all the disks in the RAID Z VDEV are going to be created as if they were the size of the smallest disk, which is um, half a gigabyte. So effectively, because one disk is used for redundancy, we're going to end up with three times half gigabyte, which is going to be approximately 1.2 gigabytes in size when it's complete. So I need to do minus F to override this warning. And now I could do ZFS list. You can see it's yeah 1.28 gig. Set pool status. And you can see now the one VDEV we have again. The, immediately under the pool name is the VDEV and that VDEV is made up of four devices or four files called disk 1234 and it's telling us it's RAID Z1 this dash zero this will make more sense it doesn't mean it's the first RAID Z it means 
something else um, I won't mention that at the moment it's um, something that's uh, that we'll cover in a later video but for now it's it's just a way of marking this VDEV it's like VDEV number zero if you like and the type of the VDEV is a RAID Z1 Um, I'll go on straight away actually, there's no point in showing you the um, recovery that can be done on all of these. I'll just destroy this and create um, a RAID Z2, otherwise known as a RAID 6 in traditional RAID systems. So same as before. If I remove that F, you'll see it fail again. It's a RAID Z2. So this time, two disks are going to be used for parity, which means we're going to have approximately just under a gigabyte of space available. So again, we get the F warning, or sorry, the warning that we can use minus F to ignore the warning. It's created the pool ZFS list. You can see the pools now just under a gigabyte and status looks effectively the same. The only difference is that it's called RAID Z2 now because that's what it is. It's using two of these disks or the or the quantity of data in two of these disks as redundancy redundancy data. So we've only got we've got the space of two disks and the other two are being used for parity. And finally, um, I'll demonstrate the creation of a RAID Z3. There's no traditional equivalent RAID for this. This is a new um, level of RAID, if you like, within ZFS. And this time, three devices are used as parity, and the remainder are used as um, data devices. So in this case, one device will be used for data and the three remaining are used for um, redundancy. So again, we get the warning because of different sizes. We wouldn't get that warning if they're all the same size. And that's created. ZFS list shows us the size of one disk now because we have only one disk worth of data and set pool status again it's virtually the same the only difference is that digit there shown we're using three times the redundancy that we originally used with raid z1 and in each case the number of parity disks is the maximum number of disks that can fail so in theory with this raid z3 a total of three disks can fail before we we're on on our own and we can start worrying about you know losing data um so what we'll do now is to create a file system to demonstrate the capability of the error detection and correction so i'm going to create file system on the test pool i'll call it file system again and do chone can i Recall this. Yep, there it is. So if we go back to current attacks, CD back into there and do another copy of the user file system. Now, this is going to take a lot longer to do because there's more computation involved. We're writing across four disks now, or four files effectively, which are on the same disk. So there's a lot of um, contention, if you like. Um, let's have a look at Z port. Oops, Z port I, stat five. And you can see the write rate on average is quite low already. Yes, yeah, it's, it's only started at 12 meg. Um, and again, what I said before about this free space, you can see it's 1.5 gig, but if I quickly go back, uh, it's jumped back, you can see the available space is only 352, and that's because this free space is the free space for the whole 
um, pool, all the devices in the pool, and that obviously includes the parity data. It's not user data, this free capacity. It's, it's um, parity data and other metadata, or parts of the ZFS database. So you can see the bandwidth, the throughput of the data that's being written is fluctuating a little bit. Could be to do with the size of files, maybe loads of little files being written now. Maybe a few big files, a bit more efficient to write the big files. Um, yeah, it's jumped back up to 10 there. And it's still writing. Let's see how much actual disk space we've got. So we've still got 71 meg, so it is quite a little bit slower. It's not as fast as it was when we were using mirrors. But we've got much more integrity now. Whereas before we had um, two mirrors, each with um, a redundant disk. So we had 600 roughly megabyte, uh, yeah, megabytes. We've now got, what, three times redundancy. We've got 25% disk space and 75% redundancy rather than 50-50. So it's a lot more redundant. But obviously, the more data disk you add to a RAID, that redundancy goes down by a certain amount every time. So th you might want to consider about what limits you might want to give to um, the number of parity disks and the number of data disks in a RAID if you choose to go to use a RAID um, rather than a mirror. <clears throat> so let's see how we're going now. Right, we're down to 20 meg, so this has filled up quite a lot quicker, even though it's been slower because it's writing more. The actual um, data that's being written is reduced. Oh, now, now it's slowing up, actually. Um, so what shall I do now? Um, I think what I need to do is to do as I did before and try and find um, some data to corrupt. So um, I have to use DD, I think. Particle slash dev. Uh, let's try and use one of the commands I used before. Right, so we've got a letter M there. So let's um, try and change that. So the next letter after that is going to be an N to flip the last bit. Okay. So pull status. Let's do a scrub on test. Okay, it's, hasn't found it yet. Now it's found it and it's repaired it as well. And again, it's it's 128k. Um, that's quite a lot actually. So maybe we're hitting quite a big file or maybe it's a bit of metadata and it's finished it so it found one checksum which is obviously that one bit that's failed and as before um, you know it's recovered it's detected it once we've run scrub and it's um, put the pool back to how it was and again that's all while it's in use we haven't had to take anything down um, so that's quite useful. Um, let's clear the error. You can see these commands are taking a little bit of time because the pool is being written to. Um, OK, 
Okay, let's uh, let's stop that. I think so. That slows down too much. So let me try and force some more errors. So we've got our M back there. Let's write. Our N back. There's the N. Let's try reading from disk 3. That's also got an M, so that's good. In exactly the same place, we've got the same. So obviously it writes stuff. Well, not obviously. It looks like it might rust, write stuff in the same position, even though the disk is a lot bigger. It writes it in the same position as the smaller disk. So let's do the echo to disk 3 with some bad data. In fact, let's make that an, a letter O. And let's change, let's do disk 1 now. And that's a letter M as well. Okay. And let's make that, I don't know, let's do a capital X or a capital Z even to disk one and we'll reread that so we've, we've corrupted three disks now no inkling of it there but let's scrub and do another status oh, okay and we shall see Uh, status, sorry, there we go. You can see that it's found three errors on each of these disks and it's repaired all three errors. So we've again detected the errors and repaired the ZFS has repaired them automatically. And we can just clear those errors. And you can see they're all gone. And like before, we can completely trash these disks if we wanted to. So we can, um, for example, let's do, uh, well, let's write zeros to one of these disks. Let's just do disk one. So that's disk one that we're just wiping completely. Okay, and um, I don't know what's in disk zero zero zero, but let's try doing dd in file equals disk zero 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 out file equals disk four size equals five hundred meg count equals one. Let's try that. Okay, so let's do ls minus l. Oh, sorry, you said pull status. That looks fine. Let's go to our kernel text. Let's copy our user again, get that doing something. So pull status. And now you can see that writing stuff to the disk, it's invalidated some of the checksums. It's detected that. So while we've been using it, it's detected the errors. We haven't had to need to do a um, scrub to get 
ZFS protecting our data and it, it warns us again to determine if these devices need to be um, replaced or not and you can see it's put the checksum on disk 1 which we wiped and disk 4 which we took a copy from disk 000 which I don't know what was in it, it might have been blank as well but the fact is that we we messed the data on these disks or these files to be realistic um, and ZFS has taken care of it all and as before um, we can do zpool clear to clear the errors and as part of the weekly or monthly routine we can just do a scrub status shows oh now now the scrub shown us even more so it's obviously found that the bits we've written to have had errors and now it just says oh no this is just this is horrible this is not this is not part of this um, pool as well so this is where we now need to replace because we did such severe data corruption to these disks effectively wiping over every sector in the disks we need to actually replace them with some as it says here some functioning devices so it's functioning the greatest state replace the device using Z pool replace so let's attempt to replace these so we can do Z pool um, replace test root ZFS disk one so again I've replaced the disk with itself effectively I could have done root ZFS disk 1 that would have worked as well can't do it now because it's been resilvered or it has resilvered it's now part of the yeah it's still resilvering it's now part of this pool but I can do this with the false disk it's exactly the same as just specifying um, the faulty disk by itself do a status you can see it's repaired the first one it's moved on to the um, other one now and that's being repaired you can see it's nearly done 92.15% and it's finished looks like it's just finishing as I did that there and it's done so I can do Z pull scrub just to be sure once more no harm in rerunning this status is checking it all again nearly done it's done and yep yeah, it says there's no bytes repaired so we now know that the pool is active and we're fully protected with all the redundancy that we had originally